Hey everybody, just uh, another quick one hopefully. This is going to be a um, how to get into a Commodore Amiga A500 heavy power supply. Um, this is a 312503.02, which is written here. It's um, relatively low output, it's not good for expanded uh, units. Input 240 volts, 5 volts out, 2.5. A, a lot of the switch mode ones have you know, 4 or 5 amps on the 5 volt rail. 12 volt rail, 1 amp, minus 12 volt rail, 0.1 amp. So I've made a start here, and the first, th the first hurdle is that these screws are not only recessed, but they're basically the, the, the plastic. It's not just plugs of silicon, it's actually filled up with plastic over the top of the screw. So what I did, I didn't get it on video, was I uh, drilled down drilled down into the data no I didn't I I drilled down with a with a kind of a a, uh, a drill uh, until I basically you know gingerly could see see the screw there so I've got all four one two three four um, but I think you can probably see there's a bit more plastic to come out there I'll attempt to undo it as it is I've got the screw heads Exposed, and what's happening is that because the screw is effectively captive, I'm going to have to do kind of pressure relief as we go. So you can't get in if you, you know, I've seen people destroy these, and it's a bit of a shame, really, because if you're nothing else, you want to really keep the case. And you can see what's happening here is because the nut's captive, normally the nut, the, the screw would come out, but because it's got plastic on the top. The only give is to shove the bottom of the case out. So this may or may not be successful. Right, that's slipped off the top. That's slipped off the top. That slips off the top. That slipped off the top. And what have we got? Okay. So this don't think this is going to be successful because to get the board out. Oh no, maybe it will. Okay, so we're inside. Top's come off. These nuts are still captive, but that's okay. That's okay. We can work like that. Um, this is the board. I've taken this screw out here, tried to lift it up, and then I've noticed there's two more screws here and here, and that's probably because the transformer weighs so much. We should now be able to lift the board out. So we've kept the case 100% original, 100%. Okay, that can go back together. I'll just go and put that away for a minute. Okay, so once you've managed to get through the uh, Commodore skew, screw security, this is what you'll find inside. I've taken off the um, connectors here. This is where the output rails go. And I'll just give you a quick sort of skim over how I think this power supply works. I've taken it apart just to check some of the caps. I've lifted this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, and I will lift these little two ones here. I've also started to test these because these are uh, metal film, I think, or polypropylene or something capacitors, and they're across the live and the neutral and the live and the earth, and they do degrade over time. So I've lifted these and I've just checked them on either an ESR meter or a you know cheapo component tester. Um, they all actually check out fine so far. I haven't done these two, but uh, I will do those two. So I'll just quickly show you how I think this works. Basically you've got the incoming supply, live earth neutral. The live goes through a switch, which is here, which is off camera. Sorry, so the live goes through the switch. And then the live is got this capacitor across to the neutral, which is a safety or not a safety but a interference suppression. It basically dumps excess spikes from the live to the neutral. The live then goes for a fuse, which is marked here. Then the live goes for another um, suppression cap onto the earth, and the neutral goes for another suppression cap onto the earth. So this is all the filtering, this is the fuse. That then goes into the primary side of the transformer. The transformer steps it down. I'm not sure exactly what voltage to, but a couple of clues are that the it's got to be less than 25, because that's the value of this cap, and it's got to be more than 12, because it's got 12 volt output, so say, I don't know, 15 volts, it steps it down to 15 volts AC. That 15 volts is then rectified by these two 
there and there diodes and sits in this ballast cap so this ballast cap serves as a reservoir for all of the positive voltage rails so it serves for the 12 volts and the plus 5 volts uh, the, the minus 12 volts is done slightly differently I'll take you through the power supply rail by rail but this is a kind of a it tips it upside down and just superimpose the um, you know the components onto it so there's your switch there's your live and neutral uh, this is your primary side of the capacitor, there's your fuse, these are the safety capacitors, um, this is the secondary side of the transformer, these are the two diodes, this is the positive of that big cap, so this whole area I've coloured red is effectively VCC or whatever you want to call it, the positive DC, rectified DC. Um, <clears throat> so let's take it through one at a time. So just taking a look at the 12 volt supply first plus 12 volts that's probably the easiest comes out the secondary gets rectified by those two diodes goes into the ballast cap and ultimately feeds this 7812 regulator here so it's very similar to a Commodore 64 type power supply where you've got the transformer the bridge the the, uh, the cap and then the, um, <clears throat> the 7805 so that's the 7812 for the 12 volt output it's got its own little cap on the output it's got a diode across it to, um, I think it's to protect it from when you plug things in and out um, and it's own little sort of ballast cap there, it's got big heat sink on it because it's reducing the voltage down and then if you look at the schematic, by the way I'm not an expert, there might be something wrong with these schematics in terms of not 100% accurate but it's how I think it works and it might be useful to someone so there's your secondary, you've got a centre tap on the uh, secondary so that goes straight to zero volts which is off camera, but it's there. Um, and then each side is AC, so say, say it's 15 volts AC. It gets rectified to the positive here, sits in that big ballast cap, which is that one there. And then it's got its own, because this ballast cap supplies all the positive rails, it's got its own sort of secondary cap for the 12 volts. This is the 7812 regulator, so the plus goes into the plus. The ground goes into the ground, and then you've got an output to 12 volts uh, and a cap across that uh, just to stabilize the output. And there's the diode, the sort of protection type diode. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Minus 12 volts rail, it looks the same, totally different. 7912 regulator, input cap, output cap, diode behind it, and a diode across the regulator. 79 regulators can take say minus 15 and step them down to minus 12 7 8 will do the same but positive here is the schematic in my version of the schematic threw me for ages but it kind of makes sense to me what threw me was you've got a cap with its positive on zero because this is the secondary this thing has got a center tap at zero volts so this is normally AC but it's got a center tap at zero volts goes all the way through the polarity is flipping 50 times a second in Europe and the cap doesn't really care what is positive and negative all it really cares about is that the positive is more positive than the negative if you like so if the positive is zero the caps happy if the negative is minus 15 because the positive is tied to zero if the polarity of this secondary winding goes negative What's going to happen is it's going to drag current this way through this diode, which means that the bottom of this cap will become more and more and more and more negative. When this flips positive again, it can't go back that way because of the diode. So whatever's in the cap just sits there. Then this goes back negative and it charges it again. So what you end up with is you end up with a cap with a minus charge on it, say minus 15 volts. That minus 15 volts is then used as the input to the 7912 and the 7912 can take a negative 15 and step it down to a negative 12. It can't take a positive and make it negative, it can just mess around with negative voltages. And then like the uh, plus rail you've got a cap on the output for stability and you've got this diode for some reason between the in and the out. Okay, so I did the plus 12, I did the minus 12, I got all over excited and thought I've got this and then I looked at the 5 volt rail. Now then I basically 
But I haven't really got this. Now, the 5 volt rail is totally different. The things on the 5 volt rail are the main ballast cap, the switching transistor, switch mode chip, coil cap, silicon control rectifier. They're the main things on there. I've tried to summarise how I think this works, so probably will be people screaming at the television going, you idiot, this is not how it works. Please bear with me, I don't, I'm not an expert, I'm just trying to sort of understand things here. I've tried to draw it, and I've had to rub it out several hundred times to get it all to make more or less sense. But that's the main ballast cap, so this is the main ballast cap, 4700 mic. That is this thing here. This is the transistor, it's a PNP transistor. That's this thing here. I'm trying to see it through the camera. Uh, this is the secondary, if you like, filter cap. That's this thing here. This is the coil. That's this thing here. Inductor, I should say. This is a silicon controlled rectifier. That's this thing here. This is the switch mode chip. That's this thing here. Okay, are you ready? This is, <laughs> is going to be interesting me trying to explain this because I don't even <laughs> really know. Okay, so main ballast cap. PMP transistor. Brief interlude. Uh, uh, you've got two types. You've got MPN transistor, you've got PMP transistor. I understand MPNs. It took me a while to figure out PMPs. If this was a if this was a MPN, what it would mean is if I put a current on that, it would cause a current to go from there to there, which would drag a larger current from there to there. That's how they work. They're like an amplifier. On a PMP it's different. On a PMP, a current going from here to here will drag a higher current from there to there which means that the base has got to be lower than the emitter the one with the arrows the emitter this is the collector this is the base so on a pnp you've got to have a lower base than emitter to get current to flow from the emitter to the collector that's one clue of how it's working the other clue <coughs> are the other clues i should say are that the base of the transistor is tied higher to the 5 volt rail normally so when nothing's happening it's sitting at vcc it's also connected to the switch mode chip output. Ignoring the fact that these are labelled as collector outputs, <coughs> just side issue, uh, they're the only thing going out. So that must be what's controlling the, um, the transistor. Just as a side note, just side issue, these are the chips, pinouts and what have you. So that's the main transistor, PMP transistor, 10 amps, 80 volts. That is the switch mode chip, the PWM chip. And there was also a silicon control rectifier, which I haven't written down. So I worked out the pin out. I know that I've got at least that the right way around. So let's go back to it. So PMP transistor, switch mode chip. Main power supply, zero volts. So what's happening here is that the switch mode chip is pulling the base of the um, transistor low in order to send uh, current from the main ballast cap through here and out onto the 5 volt rail. It must be doing that by sensing, it's, see it's got senses here, it's got a current sense going out to the 5 volt rail, it's got comparators uh, sensing, the, I presume the voltage or the current, probably the voltage on the 5 volt rail and ground, so it's got some sort of voltage divider and a voltage reference. I'm not even going to get into that because I don't understand it. And, and depending on what it's sensing, it's then altering the frequency at which it's switching this transistor. So if it switches it, if it if it leaves it on for longer, it lets more through. If it leaves it on for shorter, it lets or shorter, it lets more through. Longer, more through. Short, depending on what it's it, it needs on that rail. So it's pulsing that low when it wants to let current through. Really bad explanation. Once it's through, it goes through this little network here. Now this little network here consists of um, this cap, this. Uh, uh, inductor and this diode here, this, this rectifier diode. It's a 3 amp uh, Schottky diode <coughs> and what's happening is it's once it's coming through here it's charging up this cap but because it's switching this is getting charged, discharged, charged, discharged, charged and when you put that through a coil, when you energize and de-energize a coil what happens is when you cut the energy off it's got to go somewhere and it wants to go backwards so what this rectifier diode is doing is, I think, making sure that it can only go one way. It's blocking it from going backwards. So it's always charging the cap in the right direction. I don't, now I get less clear, if, I, if that was even possible, um, of what voltage is sitting on this cap. 
I'm not sure if it's lowering the voltage by passing it through that transistor or if it's just, I'm not sure. But after that, you've got this strange arrangement, which is this silicon control rectifier thing here and a zener diode. Now, you can use a zener diode as a basically a voltage regulator, but the one here, it looks pretty weedy. It doesn't look, um, I think it's that one there, it doesn't look strong enough to be you know a 2.5 amp output so it's either working one or two ways it's either a short circuit protection or it's the voltage regulation I can't decide which because I don't know enough about it but when the voltage difference on between these two rails so that's a 5 volt in the output goes above around 5.6 maybe a bit less because of these resistors what it will do is that this center will conduct backwards because that's it's, it's breached its limit so it will let, it, it let the current through when it does that, the gate on this silicon control rectifier will go positive. It will go high enough. And what a silicon control rectifier does is that when the voltage on the gate gets high enough, it conducts from the anode to the cathode. So what this is basically doing is if the voltage exceeds 5.6, maybe a bit less volts, this um, silicon control rectifier will basically shunt out the 5 volt rail to ground. It's either the voltage regulation, beefed up Zener basically, or it might be um, it might be a sort of crowbar. I believe this is a snubber network. I'm not sure, but I think that's some sort of snubber network um, to protect the silicon control rectifier. So I think that's how it works. Basically, the, the switch mode chip is sensing the current and the voltage on the five volt rail and ground. According to what it sees, it's varying the duty cycle of the PMP transistor. It's then putting it through this uh, inductor, which is kind of like uh, filtering it in this capacitor. And it's regulated by this Schottky diode. And then it's going through this weird kind of setup here where you've got um, a 5.6 volt limit effectively uh, controlled by the combination of a Zener and a silicon control rectifier. If you're still awake, congratulations. It took me about a day to try and figure that out and I'm still not convinced I have. But hopefully, you know, that might help someone if you've got one of these and you can actually get into it. <laughs> you can figure out there are screws in there, number one. You don't have to, you know, smash it with a hammer or something and get frustrated. But you can, you can get into it. If you do get into it, that's what you're going to see. That's broadly my idea of what does what so what I'm going to do now I've already lifted this 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 and this and check them they're all rough they're fine I'm going to put a note check them again in two years you know they're 30 years old but they're, they're reading fine um, I am going to check these little caps that is a A500 heavy mega power supply that's the inside of it that's my rather badly explained understanding of how I think it works I just opened it up because I wanted to see how it works I think that's how it works, but if you've got any other, um, you know, comments or uh, suggestions on how you think it works or how you can correct my understanding of how I think it works, I'd be interested to hear because I'd like to know, you know, what these things do, and um, that's why that's that's why I tore it apart. Thanks for watching. I hope that wasn't too boring, and I hope it helps someone at least. And I will see you all later. Cheers, bye.